नाइनटीन एटीज लेडी डेयाना दी प्रिंसेस ऑफ वेल्स क्रिएटेड क्वाइट अ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी बिकॉज शी शुक हैंड्स विद अ पेशेंट इन अ हॉस्पिटल नो वाई वॉज इट सच अ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी बिकॉज द पेशेंट हुज हैंड्स शी शुक वॉज सफरिंग फ्रॉम अ कंडीशन नोन एज एच आई वी एड्स देर वॉज एंड इज स्टिल अ लॉट ऑफ स्टिग्मा सराउंडिंग द डिसीज एंड पीपल डिट फुल्ली अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इट स्प्रेड और द इफेक्ट्स दैट इट कॉस्ट So when Lady Diana took the initiative to shake the hands of the person affected with HIV AIDS it created quite the controversy in a series of videos we'll try to understand what is HIV what is AIDS how HIV leads or causes AIDS how is it transmitted from one person to another and how can it be prevented in this video we're going to focus mainly on what is HIV what is AIDS and how HIV leads to AIDS So first of all we'll begin with the most basic question what is HIV HIV stands for the human immunodeficiency virus it's a type of a virus specifically an RNA virus it has the RNA genome inside it this virus is capable of causing a disease that affects humans and when that disease progresses to a severe stage that is what is known as AIDS now what does AIDS stand for AIDS stands for acquired immunodeficiency syndrome it's a syndrome because it's not just one disease it's the presence of multiple diseases at the same time which severely affects the patient to the point that it can lead to death so how does hiv cause aids because this is an infection this is a viral infection how does the infection transform into a syndrome that's what we'll try to understand in this video first off we'll take a look at the virus itself so the virus is a simple rna virus it has two strands of single stranded rna it is covered by the protein capsid and the lipid membrane surrounding it within the protein capsid there are two important proteins that are needed for the replication of this virus one is known as reverse transcriptase and the other is integrase first we'll try to understand what this reverse transcriptase is you might have heard of the term transcription right that is when dna is used as a template and rna is produced from it but the reverse transcriptase is an enzyme which as you can guess from its name is something that can form dna from rna so transcription is rna from dna reverse transcription where reverse transcriptase catalyzes the conversion of rna into dna why is this important and what is the function of integrase we'll learn that in just a while let's try to understand what it does to the cells first so when the virus infects the patient the virus goes and attacks the host's immune system and by immune system it specifically targets the macrophages and t lymphocytes now these two are very important cells in the immune system they are involved in fighting off a lot of infection so what this virus does is that it goes and infects these cells specifically a type of t lymphocytes known as cd4 t cells now the normal range of cd4 t cells is about 500 to 1200 cells per millimeter cube but with the infection of hiv the count of t lymphocytes drastically decreases to a point that is so low and that is what categorizes aids but before it can progress to aids hiv gives out a lot of symptoms we'll talk about it in just a while before that let's take a look at how hiv replicates inside the human being so hiv enters the host cell and once the viral particles enter the host cell reverse transcriptase begins its job and converts the viral rna into viral dna now comes integrase so what this integrase does is that it basically integrates this viral dna with the human dna so now after integration the human host cell cannot differentiate between human dna and viral dna when this cell is going to replicate the viral dna is also going to replicate along with the human dna and when the genes are being transcribed to produce proteins the viral genes are also being transcribed and viral proteins are also being produced that is why hiv is very difficult to cure or treat because the dna is literally integrated within the human dna whenever the cell replicates new viral dna is going to be produced so the virus has literally hijacked the cell it is now directing the cell to make copies of itself the virus so that more and more viruses can spread within the body 
So this is how the HIV affects the cells. Specifically, it's going to attack the macrophages and T cells. What it does is that when it attacks those cells, when it attacks the macrophages and T lymphocytes, and as it is coming out of the cell, it destroys the cells. That's how the count of CD4 lymphocytes goes down. As mature virions are released from the host cell, the CD4 cells are destroyed. And upon this process, the count of CD4 T lymphocytes also decreases is a lot. Now what this does, this decrease in CD4 T lymphocytes is that during the acute infection period, that is around two to three months after infection, because of the sudden decrease in the number of T lymphocytes, a lot of symptoms like fever, fatigue and nausea can be felt by the patient. So this is the acute infection stage where the virus is rapidly dividing inside the body and the person exhibits flu-like symptoms because of the decrease in the T lymphocytes. There is fever, body pain, weakness and nausea. Now after about two to three months, the patient enters the clinical latency stage. Now during this stage, which can last around 10 to 12 years, the virus still keeps multiplying, but there are no new symptoms that appear. This begins the chronic infection of HIV in the patient and it can last around 10 to 12 years. During this time, the spread of the disease from the infected person to another person is slightly lower compared to the acute infection period. But the virus is still inside the patient and it is still slowly but steadily replicating in the body and slowly but steadily decreasing the CD4 T lymphocyte count. Now, during this clinical latency period, as the uh, T lymphocyte count decreases, the body is susceptible to a lot of opportunistic infections. What are opportunistic infections? These are infections that could have otherwise been avoided by a healthy immune system. An adequate number of T lymphocytes and macrophages could have prevented these infections from occurring in the patient. But because HIV has infected and destroyed the T lymphocytes, the body is susceptible to these infections and that is what causes AIDS. AIDS is categorized by the presence of multiple opportunistic infections like Kaposi's sarcoma, which is a type of cancer, tuberculosis and a lot of other viral, bacterial and fungal infections. Now, during this stage, which is the last stage of the infection, the CD4 cell count becomes less than 200 cells per millimeter cube. The body is so out of immune presence that these infections can now ravage the body. And the last stage of HIV lasts for about one to two years. And during this time, death is inevitable and it will always end in death. So this is how HIV causes AIDS. It doesn't start off with AIDS immediately. There is an acute infection period where the patient experiences flu-like symptoms and then a clinical latency period that lasts for around 10 to 12 years. During this time, this immune system slowly but steadily degrades that leads to the opportunistic infections ravaging the body, which then eventually leads to AIDS and death. We'll continue the series of videos by talking more about how HIV is transmitted from one person to another and how it can be prevented in another video.